is actually, um, it, it really is a defining moment for the band. Everyone who's turned around and ever said, you know, I don't understand Silent Reprise, or I don't understand exactly what, where they're coming from, or they're too theatrical, or they're too whatever. As far as these EPs come together, it's kind of said, well, you know, if you're a big fuck you to everyone. And that this is pretty much who we are. If you start with the eights and the, you'll get it. If you start on the right hand. Cool rock and roll stories from the week. Well, I was totally surprised. I don't know if the rest of the band was in on this, but no one told me Cal was the nudist thing. <laughs> <laughs> to work behind the control panel that way, so... <laughs> How'd you get along with the rest of the members in the band? I don't really like it, but I can't really find anyone else. How was recording this EP for you, Sally? Oh, it was really cool. There was, um... I didn't realise there'd be so much sitting around. How are we going so far, Sal? I haven't done much. <laughs> <laughs> Until he's fought off his face. Yeah, well. But um, that's all part of the job. I mean, the bass part's only sort of maybe an hour at the most. How are you doing this? Sally, are you doing it? Yeah, sure. Just one more there, Sal. Sorry. The band was looking for a particular sound on this EP. Talk us through the sort of boards we used. We experimented with a few. Well, we wanted to get the vintage sound, so... Um, we, we decided to go with the Neve sound, which, which gives this very vintage, raw sound. Sure, sure, it's smaller than the rest of the other boards are out the moment, but it kind of really worked for us, so I could see us doing a lot more records with that. Because I'd like that to sort of be a, you're like, fucking hell, what's that sort of, yeah, cool. You, uh, you played some different guitars on this EP, which ones were they? Ooh, good question. Thanks for asking. <laughs> um, we we uh, had a range of strats. Um, personal favourite was um, a Jimmy Vaughan strat I've had for about eight years now. That got used on pretty much every track. Um, a 57 reissue strat. We had a nice Fender Telly on there. It's our Telly Telecaster. An Epiphone. And... Uh, Probably something that stood out was a nice 12 string, 12 string Rickenbacker. Yeah, uh, you Rickenbacker. In the shadow there. Yeah, which uh, we were allowed to borrow. So that was um, that was chocolate. So that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it was actually really good um, working with Cal, who's a who's a, a class act. Like a lunatic, so you I'll can nick the rest later. of that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Cal. This is how I was working with Cal. Cal was good. He was a bit abusive at times. <laughs> ah! But he was a pleasure. Real nice bloke. Kill the daughter. Kill. <laughs> how was working with Cal? Yeah, really cool. You bored, Sally? <laughs> oh, it's been a wet round. I don't catch up on Rolling Stones. So that's all good. Fuck's sake, Sally. <laughs> That's what set up's all about. Yeah, exactly. I sit up, you sit around. Yep. Yeah, it's heaps of fun. Yeah, really cool. Just as long as you feel like you're not getting your money's worth. <laughs> Most people consider a producer to be uh, a member of the band. What do you have to say about Cal? No comment. No comment. No comment. I told and you the start of this EP is... He's not heavy. He's my brother. <laughs> Yeah, no, Cal's great. Yeah, yeah, no, Cal, Cal, working with Cal was great. It was like an extension of myself. <laughs> <laughs>
said <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, like a he um he's a type of guy like you you'd, you'd go out and have drinks with him. It's fine. Once he's a studio, he's straight down the business. You, I don't like you. Cause you say I'm ugly, ugly. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so rude, that cow. I just don't know what I'm gonna do with him. Hold on, I'm coming! I'm coming! Come on, Neil, get the fuck out of there. Uh, Give me the He's a fucking, fucking cash. angry producer. What's it with walks and cash? Get the fuck out of here. Oh, I hate it when you get this stuff on the film. Fuck you. Over there. How did you feel about the recording? Yeah, it was alright. Next. <laughs> what sort uh, of snares did you use on, on the recordings? Uh, mine. There was mine. One of Ari's cousins. What, Alex, Chris. What brains, right? Yeah. I don't know. Hey, just press pause for a sec. No, there's no pause on here. What do you mean? How did you get along with everyone else in the band during the recording? Can I just say, people said that, that Seattle music was like <laughs> revenge of the college people. Well, I went to college, so now it's my time to shine. What was, what was the other bit? <laughs> what was the highlight of the whole thing? Uh, packing up. <laughs> when drummers hear this record, what do you think they're going to say? I, I hope that they'll identify four different snare sounds. <laughs> What song are you most impressed by that we recorded? I was actually really impressed with Here Comes Neverland. Just, yeah, like I heard it to sound like a different song. Like, it was just like a combination of Ebo and then... Um, Made you cry. <laughs> oh, pretty much. Like, Let me down. To the wall. The whole theme actually is if you read the Superman comic, you get it all right there. So, so um, if you're watching this, you probably bought the DVD or it. Oh, for um, people who are going to buy this EP.
that you can invest in and we're going to be there in your city collection forever. So whenever you feel like listening to some good music, it's going to be there. We're not asking you to listen to the music. What we're just saying to you is that like, this is what we've got, this is what we do. Um, if you like it, well, that's great, come on for the ride. But if you don't, well, that's cool too. But still buy the CD anyway.